a bit of an exciting day, and I'm glad you guys joined me here today. We gotta remember one thing. We can't be haters. We gotta keep an open mind. I mean, that's what you guys expect from us here at Power Mods. We try a lot of weird kind of stuff and stuff that's out, out of the bun kind of thing. And we found uh, a pretty cool product that I've tested already, just kind of in uh, low land, flat kind of riding, a little bit of hills, and I really think it's pretty cool. I'm going to install it on here. It's called the Exo Sled. It's an Exo Sled kit. It's a single ski kit. Converts your snowmobile from these two skis to one ski. So if you're a sailor, it's like going from a catamaran to a monohull, right? Now, why would you want to do that? I don't know. Around here, we got a lot of flat, uh, flat terrain. We lose a lot of our riding season because of the weird weather we've been getting. There's a period in there at the start of the season and at the end of the season where it's tough to ride these machines and boondock and have a lot of fun because the snow stiffens up. We're not getting much snow. And, you know, even at this time of year, I get kind of bored with this sled and I just sort of park it there and I take out the yellow bomber land, which is right there, which is an awesome sled. Like, I mean, it's the, it's the original boondocker, right? So I'll take that out and I'll wheel through the back country and rip through the swamps and have all kinds of fun. But I took the exosled sled from the owner's exosled sled for a rip the other day and I carved up that stuff. It was pretty hilarious. So I'm kind of sold on the idea that it's a product that actually does work. Um, so we're gonna install it on this sled. We're gonna take it for a rip tomorrow. And we're gonna see, uh, see how it does on, in, on the power lines. And I don't, we might get into the bush. One thing you gotta remember is that I'm not a snow bike guy. Um, I think a snow bike guy get on this and really be able to haul butt and do a lot of fun stuff in a like, very short period of time. I'm not gonna make this a video about why I don't like snow bikes or why I do like snow bikes. Um, but the, the long and the short of it is, I'm not a bike guy, never have been. I've tried snow bikes, don't hate me, but I just don't really dig it. They don't have the power that I like. I like the CVT clutches, I don't like changing gears. You know, and when I wanna boondock or when I wanna ride low snow or I really wanna hammer through the bush and do all the, the fun stuff in the the tight trees or in the swamps. I'll just take the yellow bomber and we'll hit it up and go kind of nuts. It's pretty hilarious. But I've been waiting for a product to come out that has uh, the abilities of a uh, single ski, kind of a bike, but with the power. This is the closest thing we're getting to it. So I'm gonna share that with you. We're gonna install this. And the really cool thing is, is that when you buy the kit, you take all that stuff off, you put the kit on, if you don't want to ride it because of a certain type of snow condition, say for whatever reason uh, you find that in the really deep snow you want to use the skis, you just slap everything on and it doesn't take very long. Uh, we're going to take these off in sections. Everything's going to stay attached so everything comes off. You're not chopping, you're not drilling, riveting, and doing all kinds of weird stuff. It actually bolts up to the bulkhead and just comes off when you want to take it off. So let's take a quick look at the kit. We've got this crazy kind of bumper thing here goes around the front and it's pretty cool because actually I'll show it to you later it protects the plastics so once this is on it you can't see it too much right there but it'll be on and it sort of guides all the trees and the garbage away from the front of the sled so it works handy and it's also part of the mounting system got your little steering arm gizmo Got these, uh, these bolt into your, your uh, as your, these are gonna be your shock towers basically. They bolt into the bulkhead and you utilize your stock shocks that come with the sled. These ones are set up for non piggyback type shocks but he has a kit for the piggyback type shocks as well. There's the mounting hardware. And of course this is the magical piece right here. You know, if you think you can just go and slam this out in your garage and make this <laughs> work, uh, yeah, you, you probably could. Um, but it's going to take a really long time. The fellow that invented this and patented it, by the way, um, is he put a lot of time and effort into this. And it's not that easy. You're going to spend years in R&D and not having fun uh, out playing in the snow when you can actually just buy the kit. He is a snowhawk rider. He had his snowhawk for 10 years. He bought the last one off the line, I believe, at uh, uh, J.D. Boivin. I think that's what it is, eh, J.D. Boivin? in Quebec anyway. So he got the last one. So he saw the shortfalls. He's owned sleds too. So he's seen the shortfalls of sleds, 
the shortfalls of the snow bike and the shortfalls of the snow hawk. And this is what he came up with. And he can really rip these things. So let's get this installed. We just sort of rat ratcheted the back of the bike or back of the sled down. Threw a bucket underneath the front. You could take two jack stands. We might still have to do that. I don't know if it'll work, but that's why we do this kind of thing. You can put two jack stands underneath the running boards. You need a 13, a 15, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 10, 13 and a 15 socket, I believe, some extensions, 27 Torx, and your old shocks. Ratchet gun makes things easier. All right, we'll just pop this side off. I've mostly got it, I've mostly got this one done. Now, this kit doesn't work with my piggybacks, so I'm gonna be taking this whole shock off right now. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Because now we got this whole thing. We can slap it in when we want to convert it back. We do. There's no 17 mil, rat mil ratchet wrench, eh? No. There we go. I broke this tie rod or this uh, pivot joint there when I was out sledding in the chick chocks. And uh, I think there's a recall on that. So anybody dealing with one of these and there's an aluminum one there, you might want to get her uh, swapped out for a steel one. I noticed my Chaos has a steel one. We just had this welded on some guy's garage and we did that there. It seems pretty solid now. That's a 13 and a 17. So that comes off. You can do it a couple ways. This one here is the alternative impact arm and there's no um, there's no real place to put a wrench on it. You can put a pair of ice grips on it, or you can just do this. I just put a 12 mil wrench on there. That's it. Let's pop that out, and I just looked at this, and this one's bent. So that joint needs a little TLC. Yeah, I need a new joint, actually. All right, so you just pop that out of there. You want to basically plug this hole. Off of there. Pop up this little root, little plug. Get out of there, you. Put in the provided plug. One of those. Put this in here. Now, one thing I do to all of these is you can see this. I put RTV around here on those really dusty snow kind of days. That thing fills up. So we went through and socked it full of. The RTV, which I'm going to do again because we just got a big dump. Bam. I think that's it. I'm just going to put that on. Now make sure you don't over torque these, these torques because they, uh, they strip out in that casting real easy. All right, so I'm going to pop that off. You got to love Polaris, eh? 11s, 10s, 12s, 14s, 15s, 16s, 9 16s, somewhere in between some of those. I don't even know now. Bam. Oh my goodness. Sway bars, the great sway bar debate. Well, there's that side. You're done. This over here. Now this kit puts about eight pounds on your sled. It weighs about eight pounds over what you're removing. Uh, but you know what? I took a battery out. So now it's the same. And put a aftermarket exhaust on it and you lose another 15 pounds. I did that too. 
Don't look at I have a rip in that boot. I'm gonna goo that up. So what happens is, well, you either tag it with a tree, or melting snow gets in there and freezes, and then you turn, and then it rips the boot. Tight one. It's tight like a tiger. There we go. You know what? Before we do that, let's test my other uh, my other theory. There we go. Because we we do need to get this boot off, and we need to take that arm off. So it just works a little easier if I do that. You go in there. Now I can continue and get you off. Now the instructions show to install this kind of afterwards, but I want to be able to show you guys how I'm doing this, so I'm going to install it like this just to see if it works. Now these have a little kind of a look, what looks like a grease fitting on them, but they don't need to be re-greased. Don't need it. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if this, uh, let's see if my plan works. Might thread that out on the other side. Gonna tighten that up. I'll just do this. So I'm gonna leave that kind of loose until we figure out what goes down. We'll leave that there. Leave this here like this. And then we'll install install this bad boy. It gets very well made, it's all powder coated. Nice welds. Pretty easy peasy to deal with, really. Put these little gizmos on. You just go right on, right on, oopsie. Right on to your uh, original air mounts. So you know they're really tough. And like I said, man, nothing uh, nothing gets ripped apart or Dremel tooled or you know, riveted on or anything like that. So it's an easy conversion back to where its original status was. I'm just giving her the old torque here, the old Armstrong torque. I'm gonna tighten up that upper. Buckets collapsing. All right, now we put in this bumper thingy. That's what its technical term is, I don't know. But for me, it's a bumper thingy. Nice, and it doesn't interfere with this either, so that's cool. I'm happy about that. So hang those down, put them like this. Because if you fall out, then it'll stay on. It's like it'll stay on. Yeah, it shouldn't. Yeah, I'll just put them like this. What the heck? What the heck? Pop these babies then.
somebody said to me, uh, well, what happens if you break that thing? And I, <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty tough by the looks of it. But what happens if you break an arm? Yeah, you can get out on one. Most, well, you can. There's always a way to get out. There are no snowmobiles left in the bush. That moves freely. That's done up. Now we can buckle this baby up right here. There we go. We'll pop these babies out, but when you're doing this, just watch these little, um, this little spacer thing here. Don't, don't lose that. And these go on like that, and the reason the sled is sort of, the bulkhead is tapered this way on an angle, and this takes that angle out, makes it go in there straight. I'll do the same with the other side. Just gonna push that there, and then lightly put this in. We're just sort of loosely putting all this stuff into place. See where that one went wrong. Gotta go like this. Tighten her up. That did her, eh? I think we got it. What do you think? Are you in over my shoulder there? Oh, yeah. That is bang on. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's key. We need to tell the viewers at home that. So you got to wrap one side completely um, tight just so you get enough room to get that spacer in there. Perfect. Now, that didn't. I'm just gonna zip them in, but or uh, loosely put them in, just until I get that front connected and then I'll wrap them tight. Two. Oh, we're gonna get to see this thing in action before the suspension's on. I wanted to do that before the shocks are in there. That's a lot of travel, man. Very cool. I'm gonna wrap those, uh, those on. Tighten those by hand as well. Oh, jeez. Oh, I like that. Hi, boy, bud. Just chip off the old block right there. You're welcome. Although I didn't think of it first, so maybe you're to chip off your mother's block. 
I have no idea whether, where these are supposed to be set up, but we're going to bring it all the way in. And then we can adjust when we need to. Just out of curiosity, I'll move that to just about where the middle is. And this one to right about where the middle is. I give it pretty much straight. Just curious. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, where's that other uh, arm? Very cool. Now we just have to put the shocks on. So check this out. We're gonna put on this little side plate protector here. You can see what happens, how or how this works. A lot of guys were wondering about your side panels when you're carving real hard and trees and whatnot. This actually deflects right off there. Yeah, I mean, it works, uh, at least for carving. Um, are you going to rip panels off? Man, oh man, I don't, if you're into the stuff, you're always going to rip panels off. Uh, I pull, can the, all my panels are broken on this thing just from rolling it in the snow and doing all kinds of stuff. This little bracket here needs to go in behind so we can mount this one on. And just to keep it there, I just take a slab of grease. I mean, this is the first time I've done this, but uh, slab of grease. It just sort of sticks it to the side. I'll do one of these. I should bite. Come on, come on, you bite. It'll be hard to see that there, Simon. I'm saying that I think that if you were in the back country and for whatever reason or whatever, if you wanted to swap, swap back to the original suspension, you could do it in less than an hour. Yeah, I think so. We could. We're yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we work fast. Yeah. You know what, I think I'll tighten those up right now. So the uppers are tightened. Got a ski. We end up getting this here. I have what I have an aero ski on order. Uh, well we've got this one in the time being. So we're gonna have to lift this bike up more. I, just, I called it a bike already. I did, I called it a bike. That's insane. Um, I think what we'll do, Simon, is I'll lower it and then I'll lift it. And if you can lift those jacks, the bucket wasn't high enough. Oh, oh. Like it was, it's made for it. You see that? Yeah, we're gonna try this Yeti ski. And uh, I've got the arrow ordered for it. So when I get that, I'm gonna swap it over. This apparently is really good in the powder, which is gonna be a powder day tomorrow. So we're kinda laughing. I don't want these coming off. That's bad. There now. It's just a little wobbly in the back. Oh, 
So to set up the steering on this, we've got Dave here. He's the inventor, <laughs> proprietor of this whole system. Uh, to set up the steering on it, you basically sit on it, turn the steering to make sure that it goes the same amount both ways. And all I did was I eyeballed um, the handlebars and the point on the hood. When I did it, it was the same on both sides. It was equidistant. Yep. So that's how you install the exo sled on the axis chassis. We're gonna go out and rip this thing tomorrow. So well, stay tuned. There's gonna be hopefully a lot of fun videos. Now, if I just gotta keep the sled running, that's the main thing, right? Now, keep coming back. Okay, I wanna see if I have oil. Just water. Mm -hmm.